So recently on this page, and by recently, I mean quite literally the last video we posted, we talked about one of the most prolific characters in the entirety of Naruto, Shisui. Specifically, we talked about a theory stating that Shisui is still alive and keeping an eye over the events of Naruto. And while this theory is fun to think about in total, it's one of the dumbest Naruto theories out there. However, after making this video and seeing people's responses to it, I came to realize that Shisui is one of the most misunderstood characters in the entirety of Naruto, maybe in the entirety of anime. So I thought, who better to rectify that issue than, well, little old me. It is my job after all. So with no further ado, let's get into You Know Nothing About Shisui Uchiha. But before we get to explaining what you don't know, I know that you do know that you should have already liked this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you've watched even one of my videos in the last six months, you'll know I have two other YouTube pages. NC Gamer 23 where instead of talking anime, I play video games, and Hammer's Collection, where instead of talking anime while sitting in this chair, I talk it while I build those big old statues behind me. However guys, today we also have a different plug. See, a lot of people are probably wondering why I posted a video about Naruto on a Thursday, since for the last two or so months, Thursdays have been dedicated to non-Naruto content. Well, unfortunately, me and my team kind of realized that posting non-Naruto content on this page was, well, killing this page. And even though we thought that posting about different anime would bring in different subscribers, it actually just brought in less subscribers. So we've decided after a long amount of deliberation to actually start a new page to talk about all non-Naruto content. We're talking Black Clover, JJK, AOT, Demon Slayer, everything. And we actually just posted our first video on that page today. And let me tell you, it's the hardest I've worked on a video in a long time. I ranked and explained all of the Black Clover Magical Knight Captains post time skip. And if you guys like Black Clover or One Piece or any other non-Naruto content, guys, it would mean the world to me if you went over to this new page, Weeb Commander, and dropped a follow. If that page gets 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I will get a tattoo that says, I heart Sasuke anywhere on my body that's not my face. Before we get into all that, guys, today let's talk about our favorite recurring sponsor to the page, Brilliant. Brilliant is a full-on interactive way for you to learn STEM. What is STEM? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And as somebody who holds a master's degree in biotechnology, this is very important to me. I just wish I had Brilliant when I was going for that master's degree because there was no better way to learn STEM. Brilliant has thousands of lessons with exclusive new content added every month. Brilliant offers you classes in everything from basic algebra to college-level physics. Yeah, that's right, there is college-level STEM classes is all throughout Brilliant. Because with Brilliant, you don't have to spend four years in a fortune to master science, technology, engineering, or math. Personally, as somebody who spent six years in college and more money than I'm willing to admit, I wish I had just gone for Brilliant. But let's say you don't have the time to make a four hour commitment every single day to Brilliant courses. You get to move at your own pace. I personally use Brilliant for about a half hour a day and I feel my science knowledge coming back more and more each day. Hey, I might do a dissertation on epigenetics and how it applies to the Naruto universe one of these days. But quite honestly, I wouldn't be able to achieve that without the help of Brilliant. But I know what you're saying. You're saying, Nick, I'm not interested in STEM. And that's completely fair. But take it from somebody who studied in STEM for many years and now no longer uses it. The logic and critical thinking that one acquires from studying STEM applies to other facets of your life. Because of the experience I have studying STEM, I find it substantially easier to do the day-to-day -day research I need to do to keep this page as factually accurate as possible. So what are you guys waiting for? Go to brilliant.org slash nchammer23 or use the link in my description or pinned comment. And the first 200 people who go to these links will get 20% off their annual subscription subscription free to Brilliant. Take it from Shikamaru. Intelligence gets you a far away. But enough of the plugs, let's get to Shisui. Shisui is the prodigal son of the Uchihas, known as Shisui the Body Flicker because of his proficiency at using a technique called the Body Flicker Technique. He was one of the very few and definitely one of the youngest to ever awaken the Mongikyo Sharingan. And his ability, Kodo Matsukame, is considered to be the pinnacle of Genjutsu ability. He was one of the youngest Anbu Black Ops captains ever. And on top of all of that, he was a member of the Root who spied on the Uchiha for Donzo. However, the true interest in Shisui revolves around the fact that he was painted as one of the most interesting characters we've ever seen in the show, and yet got very little time in the limelight. And because he's such an interesting character who doesn't get as much time as he deserves, a lot of people fell in love with him, but also became very curious about who he was as a person. And this led to a lot of misconceptions about who Shisui was and what his core values were. So let's go ahead and start these videos off like we tend to start these videos off. At the beginning, Shisui was born during arguably one of the most tumultuous periods in the entirety of Konoha's history. You see, Shisui was born about 12 years before the start of the Third Great Shinobi World War, the bloodiest conflict in Naruto 
Naruto history. Which means, unfortunately for Shisui, he graduated from the Ninja Academy during the Third Great Shinobi World War. And he was immediately placed on a Genian squad that saw a fair amount of action during the Third Great Shinobi World War. But fortunately for Shisui, on this Genian squad was his best friend. And Shisui's best friend was actually more talented than Shisui as a ninja. In fact, he was so much more talented than Shisui as a ninja that Shisui was highly jealous of his best friend. And while the both of them survived the Third Great Shinobi World War, while on a mission about a year after the end of the Third Great Shinobi World War, something tragic happened. You see, Shisui's Genin squad had been set out on a mission significantly too difficult, even for them. Realizing that this mission was much too difficult for the Genin that they were, however, they had to retreat. However, they were being pursued by their enemies. And while they were being pursued, by their enemies, Shisui's best friend fell behind Shisui. And as Shisui's best friend fell behind Shisui, Shisui contemplated if he should go back to help his best friend. However, because Shisui was jealous of the power of his best friend, Shisui decided to not go back to save him. Yeah, that's right. In that moment, Shisui decided that he would rather have his best friend die than be less strong than somebody else in his Genin squad. And therefore, his jealousy drove him to not help his best friend and therefore watch his best friend die at the hands of his enemies. And the grief that he felt towards his decision made him feel as though he killed his best friend personally. And the guilt of him feeling as though he killed his best friend is what awoke his Mongeku Sharingan as a Genin. However, what this actually means is that Shisui was the first person to represent long before Obito that one could awaken their Mangiko Sharingan without having to physically kill somebody close to them. You see, because we look at Obito as the first example of somebody awaking their Mangiko Sharingan without having to kill somebody close to them because he awoke it simply by watching Rin die. However, Shisui actually just awoke his Mangiko Sharingan through the feelings of loss that he felt for his best friend, not because he thought he killed him. However, he was driven to think that these feelings that he killed his best friend are what awoke his Mongeko Sharingan because Black Setsu altered the stone tablet to say that you had to kill those close to you to awaken it. And therefore, even though what he did wasn't fantastic, he was the first person to awaken an MS pacifistically. Shisui then continued to go out on Genin missions for about a year until he met somebody who would be paramount to his growth as a person and a ninja, Itachi, a year after his best friend's death. You see, Itachi was out practicing a shuriken jutsu when Shisui happened upon him. Impressed by his skill, he asked Itachi to be his friend. See, this was arguably one of the most important things Shisui would ever do. Because a lot of the misconceptions around Shisui revolve around his relationship with Itachi. A lot of people believe that Itachi was the orchestrator of the Uchiha massacre and it was all his genius plan to kill off the Uchiha in collaboration with Danzo to save Sasuke. However, that's not entirely true. Well, Itachi was obviously the person who pulled off the Uchiha massacre with the help of Obito, who really set the groundwork for all of that was Shisui. You see, the majority of Itachi's motivations in life came directly from Shisui. To say that Itachi is essentially the living embodiment of Shisui's spirit is not a stretch, and we'll get into why. You see, after Shisui happened upon Itachi using Shuriken Jutsu, they trained together and formed a brother-like bond. And this is important because neither Shisui or Itachi's living situations was ideal. You see, obviously, while Itachi was going through things like his father Fugaku pressuring him to be the next head of the Uchiha clan and rally against Konoha, Shisui also had it pretty tough. However, Shisui's situation was very different from Itachi's. You see, while Shisui, just like Itachi, was also garnering attention for his genius level intellect and also his ability to master ninjutsus like the body flicker technique, his father had become bedridden after losing his leg in the Third Great Shinobi World War, which put a ton of pressure on Shisui considering the fact that he was now a Jonin at the age of 10 or 11 and was the main breadwinner for a family of three. And to make that situation even more stressful, Shisui's father became so ill, he stopped recognizing. However, the way that Shisui deals with the situation gives us a really good look into who he was as a person. You see, Shisui, upon realizing that his father was almost definitely going to die and that his father would never be able to recognize him as his son again, just made peace with it immediately, recognizing the fact that everybody dies eventually. This is an 11 year old who has now seen his best friend die, awoken a monkey kill Sharingan, fought in the Third Great Shinobi World War, where his father lost a leg and is now just consigned to the idea that the person who literally brought him into this world is gonna pass. You see, while a lot of people do love Shisui as a character, when you take a deeper look into who Shisui was, he was cold, calculating, borderline sociopathic. He was essentially the perfect soldier. Of course, he felt guilt when he didn't turn back for his friend, but he still left his friend to die because 
of jealousy. He made peace with his father's passing long before his father even passed. And truly the only person he ever viewed with anything else but contempt was Itachi, which is why it was perfect that Itachi was chosen to join the Anbu after a couple of years of distinguished service as a Chuni. You see, Shisui had been a member of the Anbu for a couple of years now. However, since Itachi was only 11 years old, he technically was too young to join the Anbu. Therefore, Hiruzen and Danzo decided that they should give Itachi a mission to see whether or not he is able to join the Anbu at such a young age. And that mission was the assassination of Mukai Kohinata. See, Mukai Kohinata was a descendant of the Hyuga clan whose family had split off from them generations ago, and therefore Mukai Kohinata only had one act of Byakugan. However, Mukai had been selling Konoha's secrets to the Hidden Mist Village, and therefore he was signaled to be assassinated by Danzo. You see, Mukai had a lot of secrets to sell, considering he was also himself a member of the Anbu and the route. However, Itachi joining the Anbu signaled more things than just Itachi and Shisui having more opportunities to hang out. You see, Fugaku wanted Itachi installed in the Anbu so he would have somebody with a high amount of secrets to relay back to the Uchiha in the form of Itachi. And therefore, the premise of him being possibly accepted into the Anbu was very exciting to Fugaku and all of the Uchiha. And this actually worried Itachi. But we never really do ask the questions or dive that deep into why this worried Itachi. Obviously, Itachi was a pacifist. We know this because he was brought out to the battlefield by his father Fugaku to the Third Great Shinobi World's War at a very young age, and he saw what death looks like. However, by this age, Itachi had actually decided to become strong enough that he could rule the world and then lead it to a peaceful conclusion. So if Itachi only wanted to get stronger so that he could one day lead the world, why would he really care if the Uchiha were going to launch a coup? Well, one could say that it's loyalty to Konoha I would like to prose that it's possibly Shisui's doing. You see, it is canonical knowledge that Itachi only cared about three people in his life. Izumi Uchiha, his girlfriend, Shisui, his best friend, and Sasuke, his little brother. However, of those three people, Shisui was arguably the most influential out of all of them. Which is why Shisui's blind loyalty to Konoha is most likely what inspired Itachi to be blindly loyal to Konoha. Like I said, Shisui was the perfect soldier, not blinded by emotion, faithful to the very end, cold, calculated, borderline sociopathic. And and this is further evidenced by the fact that Itachi chose Shisui to help him with the assassination of Mukai Kokinata because Shisui has experience with Mukai in the past. That is, that Shisui and Mukai, both being members of the Root and the Anbu, had worked together previously, and Shisui was familiar with his skills. And Shisui, upon hearing that he had been selected to help in this assassination by Itachi, didn't even blink. Like I said, they had worked together. They were associates. They knew each other. The second that Chisui heard that Mukai Kohinata was selling secrets to the Hidden Mist Village, he realized, well, let's get him killed. You see, Itachi assassinating Mukai Kohinata isn't that crazy because Itachi hasn't been in the Anbu. He doesn't even know who Mukai Kohinata is. And these are the kind of moments I feel as though would rub off on Itachi. In this very moment, Chisui was pushing down any other personal feelings when it came to somebody else in order to accomplish a task for Konoha as a greater whole. Sound familiar to anything Itachi would do further down the line? In the very next day, after they decide to assassinate Mukai Kohinata, they trail him all around Konoha. And eventually, when they see him leave a shadow clone in Konoha to complete his tasks and make it seem as though he's actually in Konoha and not selling Konoha's secrets to the Hidden Mist Village, they follow him outside of Konoha, where eventually they jump him and tell him to surrender. However, Mukai doesn't surrender, and it's this point that Shisui becomes the first person to attack. Shisui attacks with a series of feints on Mukai Kohinata that he easily deflects. However, Shisui is attacking Mukai in order to have him fall into the trap of making eye contact with Itachi, thus placing him in Genjutsu. However, Mukai doesn't fall for this and attacks Shisui with his 64 palms technique. It's while attacking Shisui that Mukai is able to catch Shisui by the neck and begins crushing his throat. Itachi then closes the distance and tries to put Mukai under Genjutsu once again. However, the Genjutsu that Itachi has access to currently isn't strong enough to put him under Genjutsu. So it's at this point that Shisui activates his MS and puts Mukai under a even stronger Genjutsu. However, neither of them knew that Mukai put a seal on himself that if he ever got put under Genjutsu, he would pull out a sword and cut open his stomach, making it so any secrets that he had would die with him. And boom, Mukai Kohinata was dead. And just like that, Itachi was accepted to the Anbu. However, this is when Shisui and Itachi's relationship gets a bit complicated. You see, after Itachi joins the Anbu, all of the Uchiha put a lot of weight on him, informing the Uchiha with all of the secrets of Konoha. And therefore, Therefore, when he doesn't exactly do that, they all get really suspicious of him. Therefore, the Konoha police force, aka the Uchihas, tell Shisui, since he's also a member of the route, to keep an eye on Itachi. However, the Uchihas didn't know that the reason that Itachi didn't want to actively help the Uchiha throw a coup 
was probably Shisui. And the fact that Shisui was being told to monitor one of his closest friends by his own clan is actually what motivated him to go to Hiruzen. You see, it was Shisui who revealed to the third Hokage that the Uchiha's were planning a coup. And upon hearing of the Uchiha's plan to throw a coup, Hiruzen said that Shisui could spy on his clan for Hiruzen. Actually, I'm sorry, this is actually what makes Shisui an Anbu member. Like the fact that Hiruzen tells him to spy on his own clan for the village is what makes Shisui an Anbu member. So Shisui was an Anbu before this moment, which makes a lot of sense when you consider the fact that everyone was putting so much pressure on Itachi to be Anbu, but Shisui being Anbu would have been like, they already would have put pressure on him. So the fact that he would have been Anbu before this moment wouldn't made any sense. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I read this light novel. Regardless, now that Shisui had been secretly named an Anbu member, him and Itachi were spying on the Uchiha together, which shows us that Shisui was actually the person to pull Itachi into the whole spying on the Uchiha thing in the first place. But let's take a quick break to see what's happening on Hammer's collection today. So when it comes down to acquiring Japanese goods like our favorite donut, we're about to see there's no better option than Bai. It's time for everyone's favorite part. Nick pulls a box out of a box using the power. Overly nimble feet, baby! Got it! So as with any statue, we're gonna start with our base. As you can see, this is the Mugen train that Rengoku will be standing on top of. Obviously, after its destruction, as you can see, there's explosions coming out of the side. All of this fire created by Rengoku's sword style. And I believe these here and here are gonna be our lights that are most likely gonna light up all of these flame effects. Now, obviously, we all know that this fight ends with Rengoku with another hole to breathe through, but let's be real, he wouldn't even made it that far if he didn't have these two pieces so we have his sword hilt in one of his hands obviously the hands not attached and then we have i want to give you all a close-up on how easy that sword was to get in and out obviously it's a little top heavy because of these flame effects but for real all you have to do was slide that in there like that and then boom it's in there. Giving Itachi the motivation to separate himself from the clan in order to serve the greater will of Konoha as a whole. Because here's my thing about Shisui. Technically, Itachi has people in the Uchiha clan he's trying to save, right, Sasuke? And therefore, Itachi can be threatened with things by Danzo, like if the coup happens, I'll make sure Sasuke and the rest of the Uchihas die. However, Shisui has already lost his father and only has his mother left. And it's never stated that Shisui and his mother are particularly close. Therefore, Shisui's motivation to spy on the Uchiha for Konoha is almost entirely based in just loyalty to Konoha. Obviously, you could say if the coup happened, Itachi would be in danger, but Itachi was also working for Konoha. So the simple act of supposedly wrapping Itachi into the greater scheme of spying the Uchiha would keep him out of the death pool of the coup. And for months, it carries on like this. Itachi and Shisui keep an eye on all of the Uchihas using hidden cameras. Until one night, Shisui calls Itachi to a secret meeting place. And it's at the secret meeting place that Shisui reveals to Itachi that the plan to vote on the coup is going to happen tomorrow morning and the consensus states that it will be in favor of the coup, which means that Shisui feels as though they have to intervene. And Shisui's plan to use Kodo and Matsukame had been run past Hiruzen and approved by Hiruzen. But if we stop and think about Shisui's plan of using Kodo and Matsukame on Fugaku for even one second, it's kind of a messed up plan. Think about the plan itself. It's not something that people put a lot of thought into usually. But essentially what Shisui was trying to accomplish was to brainwash the head of a clan that felt as though it had been spited against in Konoha in order to sway the entire clan to have subservience to Konoha. And while Itachi and Shisui technically come to the conclusion that the Uchihas aren't being spited against, and there's only individual spites against the Uchihas, but not a greater spite by the entirety of Konoha as a whole, essentially what they mean by that is that they think Konoha as a society isn't discriminating against the Uchiha, it's just some individual people within society dislike the Uchiha. And therefore, any idea of slights against the Uchiha as a greater whole aren't justified by the Uchiha clan. However, if you look at the events of Naruto objectively, that's just inherently not true. Oh yes, certain people do have individual prejudices against the Uchiha, and that's what's going to be the most glaring on the day-to-day -day in Konoha. Historically, the Uchihas have been oppressed. While I'm an ardent supporter that the Uchiha were the best choice for the Konoha police force, some argue that Tobirama was making them the police so they would never rise to the rank of Hokage, stating by giving them a lower station job, they would never have the ability to rise to the ranks. Now, I don't believe this is true, but some could see this as a slight. However, what was absolutely 
technically a slight, was not allowing the Uchiha to go suppress Kurama. See, on the night of Naruto's birth and the night that Kurama broke out of Kushina, the Uchiha weren't allowed to help. Essentially, on that night, Fugaku was getting all of the Uchiha together to go and put Kurama under Genjutsu to suppress his abilities and get him resealed. However, Donzo, Hiruzen, and the rest of the elders decided that this attack might actually be orchestrated by the Uchiha and therefore didn't allow them to go to the front lines. Instead, they were sent to the wall around Konoha and told to protect the village. Essentially, just benching them from a fight they would have been incredibly useful in. In fact, if they had been sent, it's more likely than not that Minato would still be alive. And in this moment of prejudice, they were slighted. And not only were they slighted, they were stopped from doing something helpful. And therefore, the Uchihas had to live with the guilt of knowing that they could have saved the fourth Hokage and his wife. And then, after this event, the Uchihas were packed up and sent to the outskirts to live in obscurity, which is absolutely a slight. The Uchihas were one of the founding families of Konoha, and yet they have never had somebody rise to the ranks of Hokage. Shizui and Itachi hadn't been alive long enough to understand that the Uchihas were most definitely prejudiced against in Konoha, and therefore Shisui's plan was to erase everything that they knew was wrong that happened to them in order to get them to be subservient to people who had never been good to them. That would be like if we took the head of the Black Panthers and brainwashed them into thinking that cops have never done anything wrong to people of color in their entire lives. You would be erasing their real life experience to submit them to blind loyalty for people who really don't care about them. It's the perfect idea from somebody who has blind loyalty to nationalistic views. In our arguably the worst way to deal with this situation, which is why when Hiruzen relayed the message of this plan to Donzo, Donzo didn't necessarily agree with it. See, I'm not saying that Donzo's a good person, and I'm also not saying that his plan of killing off all the Uchiha was the correct idea. But him realizing that using Kodo Matsukami on Fugaku to sway the tide of feelings of the Uchiha was a dumb idea, well, that I do agree with. Though we come to that agreement through different avenues. You see, Donzo, upon hearing this idea, just kind of figured that swaying one person person, even though they are the head of the Uchiha, wouldn't change the tide of the feelings. And therefore, in a couple of years, we would be dealing with the same issue once Fugaku died. Or, heaven forbid, Fugaku would be usurped as the leader of the Uchiha because of his change in views. I just think it's the wrong thing to do. But, you know, different strokes, different folks. But because Donzo didn't agree with his Koto Amatsukame plan, he called Shisui to a private meeting with him before Shisui was to do this plan. However, before Shisui went to this meeting with Donzo, he told Itachi to not be present at tonight's meeting. Meeting. This is because Shisui figured that people would blame Fugaku's change in opinion on Itachi. Once again, proving that the only person that Shisui didn't feel contempt towards was Itachi. However, when Shisui pulls up to his meeting with Donzo, Donzo reveals to Shisui that he already knows his plan. And that Donzo doesn't believe that this plan will stop the coup, but only postpone it. And Shisui argues that it's worth the effort, which I would like to interject here. You know, it's also worth the effort just putting Fugaku and Hiruzen in the same room. Like, how did we never have a talk before we just jumped to the conclusion, like, let's mind wash each other? However, before Shisui can even finish his argument, Donzo states that his eyes would be better used if Donzo had them. And as Donzo leaps at Shisui, Shisui realizes he can't move. And this is because from the shadows, Yoji Aburame has released a Kochu to Shisui. A Kochu being an Aburame bug that only Yoji Aburame is able to use. This bug, the size of a mosquito, is almost imperceptible and also upon biting its target, paralyzes them and fatally poisons them. And since Shisui is frozen, standing right there, Donzo plucks out his right eye. However, the pain of having his eye plucked out allows Shisui to break out of the paralysis, and he escapes. And it's at this point that Yoji Aburame and a bunch of other root members are sent to pursue Shisui in order to kill him before he talks to Itachi. You see, Donzo feared that upon Shisui talking to Itachi, that Itachi would rally against Donzo. However, what Donzo failed to realize is how completely both Donzo and Shisui had brainwashed Itachi. You see, Shisui flees back to the hidden meeting place where Itachi is still waiting. And Itachi is surprised to see him so early. The meeting hasn't even started. The Uchiha meeting to vote on the coup, that is. Shisui tells Itachi that he failed to use his Koto Amatsukame and that Donzo had actually stolen his other one. And it's at this point that Shisui says something very odd. He states that the coup is now unavoidable, which has never sat right with me considering the fact that Shisui still absolutely had one Koto Amatsukame left that either Itachi or Shisui could use. But I guess the unwillingness of Donzo to go along with this plan is what motivated them to scrap it entirely. Regardless, never sat right with me. And it's in this moment that Shisui states that Donzo can never have his other eye, and he calls a crow down from the sky 
pulls out his other eye and places it in the crow. He then instructs this crow to follow Itachi for the rest of his life. After releasing the crow, Shisui, with no eyes left, tells Itachi about how he awoke his MS, saying that the guilt he felt because he thought he killed his friend is what allowed him to awaken it. Knowing that Yoji Abarame's poison was about to kill him, he instructs Itachi to kill him. See, Shisui understands that Itachi would be better suited in this world if he awoke his Mongiko Sharingan. And since Shisui knew that they were best friends, he told Itachi to awaken it by ending Shisui's life. And as Itachi shakily approaches Shisui with a kunai in his hand, trying to push back tears, Shisui tells him that he believes Itachi's powers are incredible and that one day they will change the world. And his last words are that he trusts Itachi will be able to handle the rest. Yeah, that's right. Shisui's dying words weren't, I love you as a friend, or I'm so happy we met. No, it's carry on, finish the mission. Well, he does state that he's happy he met Itachi, but his actual last words are finish the mission. Not like verbatim, I'm paraphrasing. And thus, by making his last words to Itachi to finish the mission, i.e. make sure that the coup doesn't happen, Shisui has cemented those values in Itachi. Because as Itachi stands there with the power of the MS now pulsing in his eyes, he vows to stop his own clan. Not Donzo, the person who had just stolen one of Shisui's eyes and essentially killed him. No, his clan. Because Shisui, who was now effectively just assassinated by Donzo, was dying, said no bad words about Donzo besides the fact that Itachi should have his other eye so Donzo doesn't get it. He wasn't like, hey man, we had a plan and that old dude just killed me and ruined it. He essentially just told Itachi, let's just make sure his plan doesn't get any stronger by getting my other eye. Because Shisui was blindly allegiant to Konoha and Donzo was a representation of Konoha's will. And therefore, instead of fighting Donzo after he paralyzed him and stole one of his eyes or even telling Itachi to go kill Donzo, he just died telling Itachi to live out Konoha's will. And thus Shisui died a literal representation of what he said he didn't acknowledge. That is to say Shisui was assassinated for trying to help, at least in his mind, the Uchiha clan. Donzo, the physical representation of Konoha's underworld in the worst parts of its motivations, assassinated Shisui. And he assassinated Shisui because he was trying to stop the coup. Shisui was trying to better the Uchiha in his mind and was killed for it. And thus, in his death, he proved that he and Itachi were wrong in their ideology that the Uchiha weren't being oppressed by the greater will of Konoha. However, his death didn't motivate Itachi to see the error of their ways. No, because of the imparting words that Shisui left while he was dying, it motivated Itachi to go further into his loyalty with Konoha. Thus, in his death, essentially cementing the Uchiha massacres happening. Listen, I'm not here saying that Shisui's a bad character or even poorly written. In fact, I think the way that he's written is incredible. He is the physical representation of nationalism gone wrong. He tells the story of how talent can be abused and how one person with enough will and talent can rewrite history. He is a truly fascinating character and one of my favorites in the show, but he is far from an empathetic hero. He's a super soldier who got pointed in the wrong direction. And this switching up of allegiances is maybe the real reason his father wasn't able to recognize him. What do you guys think? Do you feel as though you understand Shisui better than you used to now? Do you guys think that my opinion on him is wrong? Tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I think Tobi Rama's a good guy, and I think Shisui's a bad guy. You could, uh, they are magic.